July 5th and 6th. It's uh, it's showtime, baby. I got my flat ass all the way up to Weathersfield, Connecticut. Have you heard of it? I didn't think so. I haven't heard of it either. It's right by Hartford, Connecticut, which is uh, kind of a hellhole if I'm being if I'm being honest. Uh, my hotel was in downtown Hartford, and that's like a it's like literally a scene from The Walking Dead, man. You walk out there, it's just any change, you know. It, it's uh, it's it's terrifying, you know. Like I guarantee you, like I would say there is an eighty nine percent chance. If you walk around downtown Hartford after midnight, you're going to get robbed. Like, I would say there's a pretty good chance, you know. Um, I would put money that you would get your money stolen if you did that. Um, but anyway, so I got my uh, I got a new guy uh, opening for me this time. I'm trying out a new opener. Uh, this guy, Keith Chase. Very, uh, very, very, I don't want to say very funny. He's new, but he's a funny guy. I'm not, hey, I'm honest, all right? I'm not giving, I'm not giving flowers to people that don't deserve it. But uh, no, Keith Chase, fu- a funny guy. Keith Chase. Yeah. I thought I said Keith Chase. Those THs and Fs, you know, they're tricky. But uh, Keith Chase uh, drove me up there. He opened the show. Funny guy, hardworking cat. That's what I like about him. This guy barks uh, for shows. If you guys don't know what barking is, it's when you you stand outside and you 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 you, you beg people to come in. You hand out comedy flyers. Um, so he's doing what he's got to do to get on stage, which I appreciate. I, pre- I appreciate the hustle. Um, he works hard, and he bugged me enough to to <laughs> to get him this gig. So um, brought him with me. Great time, good conversation. Super chill guy. Um, so we get, uh, he drops me off at the hotel around, I guess I want to say four. I check in, I, uh, work on my set and then we get to the show and do the last time I did this gig. Um, it was literally the weekend before my comedy special taping. So at that point I was literally just working on the material, like the, 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 the hour long material that, um, I was going to do for the special taping, right? And it was literally like one of the it was it was such a humbling weekend because the shows were just so tough. Um I was getting heckled the whole th- It was like it was it's like it was just a drunk, rowdy, like just animalistic crowd, you know, just heckling and um cursing at me. Like one guy, this is last year uh, when I did the same gig. One guy literally, like, as soon as I got on stage, he was like, fuck this guy. That's literally, literally as soon as I got up there. And, like, every after every joke, he'd be like, that sucks. I hate this guy. This guy sucks. I hate. And, like, I'm actually doing well. So, it's, like, it's literally just him. And, like, but it's it's messing up the show because he's saying these things out loud in some, like, drunk, weird stupor. And everyone around him is, like, awkward. So, they're not laughing, right? So, like, I have this one ho- black hole in the crowd of people not, like, being able to enjoy the show one guy literally hating me i guess he hates asians or hates keanu reeves i have no idea what the problem and he just i midway point he just left with thank god and um um it was just a tough weekend like it was just one of these like really white blue collar types of people that like i don't know it probably would have been better if i went a larry the cable guy was up there you know or some like uh guy that does like hack you know material from the 90s or something uh, and it was just so, but the thing that actually I really appreciated about the, how hard that weekend was, was that I had been working on my, uh, special material and despite them being hecklers and annoying and stuff, I never like totally deviated from my set. So I got through all my material and it was still like doing well. It was just like a struggle to get them to like really shut up and listen and I remember my takeaway from that weekend was like, dude, if my material can work for these drunk idiots that are, you know, animals, then if people that aren't animals that actually care what I have to say and are well behaved at a comedy club that like polices the room, uh, here's it. They're gonna love it. So it was actually it was actually a positive in a in a weird way. Um but so but this time around, um they moved the comedy club from a a brewery to a to a to a restaurant, which is uh probably why the clientele was a lot better. Like the so the people for this weekend at the restaurant, it was like a high end restaurant. Um, they were like you know I think they were just like classier people, you know, smarter, well behaved, more uh what do you call it? 
aristocraty, I guess, as opposed to like the brewery people that are just drunk animals, you know. Um, but Friday, man, the whole weekend was fun. Whole weekend was fun. But Friday was fun because we had a uh, an Indian um, birthday, and it was like it took up like two tables, and uh, they were a lot of fun. Um, it's funny because like. Now when uh, Indian, like, because I dated an Indian girl for so long, I feel like when Indian people are in the crowd, I, I feel like I can actually connect with them a little more, you know? Is that how it works? Like, you date a certain race and you meet their family and you go to some of the, like, family functions. You can, you feel like you can, like, understand them more, right? That's, like, that's what we all need to do. That's what these, like, racist, Republican, white, what people need to do. They need to just start banging other races, you know, start to get to know their family a little bit, right? If you're a white racist guy, date a black girl, you know, get laid, have fun, go to some cookouts, right? Go to a block party, and you'll, you'll just have more appreciation, I feel like, you know? That's what it is. There's all, Every comedian has that joke. Oh, how can you be racist since, like, whatever uh, country or whatever race or religion has this kind of food? It's like, no, you got to start banging their people, you know? That's how you really get appreciation for them. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, they were so sweet, man. So uh, it was fun. It was a birthday. Sometimes when you get like, it was a, it was a lady's birthday too. Sometimes when you kind of get these kind of things, uh, they can be disruptive because like girls, you know, uh, they love attention. They like making things about them, but they were just awesome, man. They were, they were a good mix of like, you could talk to them and they enjoyed that. But when you also did jokes, they also listened and enjoyed that too. So they really came out for a comedy. They didn't come out for like, um, oh, let's go to a show and get roasted and make it about us. You know what I mean? So that was that was just a ton of fun. Um, the show was great. I can't I, I can't uh, I watched the footage and like I was just having so much fun, man. I mean, I've said this before, but like when I was in my relationship, you know, um, and I the like I, I sometimes I watched the, even the special I did when we had just broken up. I, I don't smile, you know, I don't do any, like, I, I'm not like having like the time of my life like I am now, you know, I'm just so much more free and so much myself, it's, uh, it's just great, man, so I can't wait to like, um, share some of the, the clips with you guys and some of the stuff, um, I gotta do, I do gotta say, I can't wait for the special to come out, I'm so, I'm so bored with sharing, um, crowd work footage, um, I think it's also kind of run its course with the social media, you know, unless someone's like throwing something at you or like, I don't know, something crazy happens. Like you're talking to someone that's like, you know, with, you know, cheating on their husband, but like their husband is like at the show at the same, it's like, unless it's something wild like that, like I think everyone's kind of checked out with crowd work clips, but, uh, you know, I got to post content somehow. So, but yeah, I just can't wait till I can actually post more, uh, material based stuff. You know, I, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't want to get too, um, into the content thing again, but so. First show, I'm trying to think what else. So we had the Indian group, um, which was super fun. Uh, and then shout out to Ryan, who books the shows. He also came by, um, and uh, he did some time, too. Ryan Ryan, Ryan went on stage with a, with a, with like a hotel robe and flip-flops, which, which I think is so dope. The level, the level of comfortability. I mean, it's his club, and it's his whole – it's his operation. So it's like – who cares, right? I'm going to dress how I want. Who's going to fire me? But, like, I think there's something to that. I've always wanted, you know, the more, here's the thing. The more and more I start to, you know, get confidence in myself, the more and more I my body gets, you know, better, the more I just, I, I, I'm, like, not, I don't really care that much about the clothes I wear because, like, I know if I take my clothes off, I look great, you know? Obviously, just first impression and stuff. But I just don't. I just I'm too confident at this point, you know. So it's like, yeah, maybe I'll go on stage with. <laughs> I always said this: if I ever become like famous and blow up, and like I'm selling like millions of tickets at theaters, like I may just go up there in flip flops and shorts, and like maybe I'll go shirtless, you know, like a Bert Kreischer. But um, right now, right now, still have you know, I guess have some little dress etiquette. But um, yeah, nothing else on that Friday show. Was there anything else crazy that happened? No, it was just a fun show all around. Um, but then Saturday came up. So Saturday, uh, Keith and I, we watched the, the Yankees and the Red Sox game during the day. The Yankees scored 14 runs, which was, a, which was a, a lot of fun to watch. And then we did the second show. Second show was also 
a lot of fun. Ryan's uh, son came by. He's like a, he's got like a six year old, and it was funny because like Ryan's doing jokes on stage about his son. And his son's like heckling him. Like Ryan's like, you know, the other day my son said blah 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 blah, and then his, his son's like, I didn't say that, and it was like it was really cute and really fun to watch. Um, Keith goes up. He does a good job, and then I go on have a great you know fun set. There was um there is a uh, it was a lot younger. A lot of younger and whiter this show, and uh, there was a guy in the crowd who's uh, he like his job. This is not. I'm not even. I I I, I probably will have like footage of this posted um, in, in, the, in the coming weeks. But he is a professional. Like, uh, what is it? Animals. Uh, psychologist. No, not animal. Not animal. He's an animal scientist, right? And his like his like. Sp- whatever forte or specific area of study are sheeps and he studies um nutrition how nutrition affects how 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 the the nutrition of sheep like how their nutrition the types of foods they eat don't eat etc how that affects their 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 semen levels (laughs) <laughs> I'm not even making this up. This is what the guy does for work. And I, I thought it was, you know, sometimes people say crazy stuff at shows. That's yeah, literally what he does. Like, that is, like, is like area of study. And it's just so funny because, like, that's such a wild thing to study. But then you also got to remember it's, like, you know, because we always think about things of, like, you know, who's the guy that invented this, right? Who's the guy that discovered um, this, right? Like, who's the guy that, like, um, like, there's always someone. There's something. There's Someone's got to do it, you know? Someone's got to study sheep semen, right? That <laughs> someone's got to do it, and we found the guy, you know. And uh, that was just so, it was so much. It was so fun, just like doing crowd work with him and like kind of like uncovering that. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, they were so fun. Um, and uh, yeah, man, it was just a smooth weekend, no drama. Um, I got to eat some steaks from the restaurant, which is great. Uh, man, I had like on Saturday, I got uh steak and potatoes and like avocado on the side and I ate and dude, it was the first time in God knows how long that I felt like full, you know, which I don't like feeling full by the way. Like I like, I like being satisfied with food. Like I like feeling, I like getting to the point where it's like, okay, like I'm good. Like I don't need to eat, but I don't like that feeling where like, you know, where you're full and like you legitimately can't move, you know, or like it's actually like painful, you know? Um, yeah, that's why, like, you know, especially when I date, I try not to eat too much on dates, um, because, like, literally, it's like, uh, you know, you go to date, you gotta go, you know, you want to, you go to dinner, you gotta maybe, you know, go do stuff after, and, like, dude, if I'm, if I'm, like, full, full, it's over, like, I, I, I'm going home and laying down and and going to bed, you know, there's no, I'm not going to any bars, you know, I'm not, I'm not sleeping with you at that point, and I'm just, I'm not moving, you know, it sucks to it sucks to make love when you have a full belly, you know, you just feel the thing like, like, like splashing up and down. It's just not, it's just not good. Anyways. Um, so great weekend. Shout out to a uh, comedy craft beer. Shout out to Ryan. Thanks to Keith for driving me up. Um, Weathersfield, Connecticut, a lot of fun. Um, hope I made some new fans. Uh, it was just a blast. I, I got nothing bad to say about it. I hope to come back next year and, uh, entertain you guys, uh, you know, again.